What's up guys? So today I will be going to do diet examination with my friends in the lab at my school. And yeah, I'm very excited to see what the outcome is. And let's cut the sudden transition. Go. Okay, so these are the materials. From left to right, I have an ice bath maintaining the temperature around 5 degrees. 10 mL of hydrochloric acid, 5 mL of distilled water, 2 boiling tubes each containing ethyl 4 amino benzoid and sodium nitrite respectively, each with 0.25 grams, and a beaker containing 0.50 grams of 2 naphthol. I will also be using 5 mL of sodium hydroxide solution at the later steps. To start off, I pour in 10 mL of acid into the amino benzoate and stir to dissolve all of it. Well, uh, noticing that the solid is hard to dissolve by shaking, I proceed to use a glass rod instead. Since what I was given is done in a small scale, there is no need to use a magnetic stirrer, though the process is taking a long time. After a decent amount of solid has dissolved, I transfer the boiling tube in into the ice bath. Well, this is to ensure the mixture has the same temperature as the ice bath. I then pour 5 ml of distilled water into the sodium nitrite, making sure all of it is dissolved before placing it into the ice bath as well. While waiting for both boiling cubes to cool down, I proceed in preparing my naphthol. To do this, I add 5 ml of dilute sodium hydroxide into the beaker containing the naphthol and stir it to dissolve all of it. It was a huge pain to dissolve all of it completely because the compound is in a huge chunks instead of fine powder. After the whole solid has dissolved, I then place the whole beaker into another ice bath. Returning to my first ice bath, I carefully transfer all the sodium nitrite solution into the ethyl 4 amino benzoate mixture dropwise using a teat pipette. At this point, a diazonium ion is formed. It is advisable to add dropwise as the reaction is giving out heat that might decompose the ion into a phenol. It is noted that the reaction should be taken place in low temperature, hence the boiling tube cannot be taken out from the ice bath as well. After transferring all sodium nitrite solution, I carefully remove the empty boiling tube. I give it a small stir to ensure all reactants are have reacted completely. I want to test whether if the red dye will evolve when naphthol is added. To do this, I use a tissue paper, add a drop of the diazonium ion solution onto it, and then proceed by adding a drop of naphthol onto it. A bright red color is seen, which is very fascinating. I then carefully proceed by adding in naphthol from the beaker into the mixture solution in the boiling tube. It is also added by dropwise, and I shake the beaker from time to time to ensure all the naphthol have been reacted with the diazonium ion. That is when the most Wednesday to Friday moment come. As I shake the big boiling tube for the third time, the boiling tube broke. So I had to do everything again to save our time. Here is a short montage on my second run.
in the end of my second round I do get a bright red precipitate though I may be a, making a mistake by taking it out from the ice bath and not placing it back the precipitate turns from red to brown to black as I place the boiling tube on my table in the empty beaker I then transfer my result in my second run into a large beaker with 50 ml of distilled water and I wash it a few times to get all my results into the beaker I then add my result from the first run into the beaker as well which I had to say I should actually separate my first result from my second as the precipitate in my first run starts turning black as I pour into the beaker the solution as well starts turning brown before being filtered off I then take the whole solution and filter it out using the vacuum funnel or the Bruchner funnel which I did not include in this video though it was an interesting experience working with it so this is my result which is very black dark brownish black yeah and everyone's color in the class is different it varies through a whole spectrum from red to brown and even black and everyone's yields is different as well so here are some of my pictures of my of my friends result and hope you enjoy in the next few seconds All in all, I think this experiment doesn't take up much time and it's quite simple to handle it out. Though finance is required to obtain a more beautiful color, transfer of solution should be in drop wise to prevent overheating and change of color and everything should be done in ice bath. Thanks for watching. If you like it, please smack the like button like when you smack your remote control when it's not working properly. Do subscribe if you like random things and share it out if you love sharing random things. See you in the next video. Bye.